Hey guys, it's your girl Corporate Carolyn here taking a break from work before I eat lunch. And I just had a great idea that I wanted to share with you guys how you can be a superstar in meetings. Like when you start to get in the upper levels of um, the pay that you want to maintain, you really want to be productive in meetings and you want to shine before people who might be, you know, checking you out for your latest gig. And so I just want you to think forward. That's why you hear me talking about the actual dollar amounts that people are aspire, are aspiring to. So one of the ways that I think that you can be a superstar in meetings is um, jokingly, I'll refer to it as fix your face. Um, like especially if you're in person or if you're on camera and then someone is saying something that you might not agree with or you might view it as being a little outlandish, um, you need to maintain the same professional looking, um, non-upset, non-confrontational face that, um, that you would normally have because you don't know who's watching you. I mean like directors or other higher ups might be watching you to see how you'll behave. And so you need to maintain the same face, even if someone is saying something ridiculous, like they may have lost a book that you loaned them that belonged to your son. And so you don't need to scowl or look really angry. You can still deliver the same message without um, having an angry looking face because sometimes people form um, conclusions about you based on the face that um, that you're projecting. And some other people need to be um, um, cognitive of the fact that they might have, what is it called, a B word resting face? <laughs> You know, where you're looking angry when really, you know, you just might be sitting there um, thinking about what your grocery list will be when you go to Walmart later. So just if you need to, you know, take a look at your phone in camera mode and see how you're looking because you want to like present a peaceful, pleasant, professional face when you're in meetings. That goes a long way. And then next, you want to also maintain a professional um, speaking voice, like a level of volume that doesn't mean that you're upset. Because sometimes when you start raising your voice, and usually the matter I get the lower I get, especially like if I'm complaining at a hotel or at a business establishment, um, the entire world doesn't need to know what I'm upset about because usually the person that you're talking to, it's not their fault. And if your voice starts raising, um, you know, people start looking at you in a different way. Like, you know, especially for me being black, you know, angry black woman alert. And so, no, you don't get that. My voice is really low. And once at a hotel, I was complaining and the woman said, I appreciate the fact that you're telling me about the situation that you encountered in, you know, one of the restrooms and um, for giving us a chance to fix it instead of alerting, you know, the public to that. And people tend to reward you when you, you know, don't try to go out of your way to embarrass them. But in a corporate setting, you don't want to match voice levels for voice levels. You just want to stay professional. Still say what you're saying. I said what I said, but I didn't have to say it in an angry voice or a loud voice, you know, where I'm yelling at someone. And I'll give an example. Like I was on a call with a director and a senior director, but I was speaking to a peer. And then um, like, as I said what I said, um, he said, well, you know, that's not what I did. And you could tell that he was starting to get, you know, a little annoyed because he was misinterpreting what I was saying. And so in the same level of voice, I just repeat it back. I'm not disputing anything that you said. I'm just saying what I experienced with this other person external to our group, that's what I observed. But I am not disputing anything that you have said um, you know, on this call, just so that he knew that I wasn't trying to make him look bad in front of this director and the senior director. And then he came back more calmly. But if I would have started going tit for tat, raising my voice, we both would have looked bad. <laughs> 
front of our bosses. So, um, so that's number two. And then number three, if you're at a meeting, like maybe where you are a required attendee or you're someone who um, it matters to you, the outcome of that meeting, um, you really need to pay attention. Um, I know the phones are distractions, especially when you work from home like I do, but you really need to pay attention. And one of the best things that I've learned to do on calls is I um, summarize points. You know, like say if a person, especially external to the group, says, well, um, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Like if you say, okay, so we'll satisfy um, these particular requirements or these findings if we deliver A, B, and C. Is that correct? And then you repeat it back to them and then get them to repeat back to you. Yes, that is correct. If you deliver A, B, and C, you'll be in compliance with this particular requirement or this finding. And then you say, oh, okay, great. And then also you'll just reiterate what was agreed with the people listening um, that are going to do work with you. And so especially if you have it as a recording, that's a good thing. And then when you have subsequent meetings with those key people, you reiterate. Like on the call that we had two weeks ago, um, it is true that you agreed that if we deliver A, B, and C, we'll be in compliance with that requirement. Is that true? And you just keep repeating that back. You know, the more people that join a call and then if that person says, well, no, that wasn't what my understanding was, you clarify at once and make sure you get it in writing at some point um, or in a recording that that was the agreement. And then even if the person says, well, no, 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 that's not what I meant. That wasn't my understanding. You clarify that immediately um, with your face fixed and the same level of your professional speaking voice and then you move forward. I mean that has led to um, just me you know being a meeting superstar like with people who normally might have said eh, who is she you know what is she talking about but all of a sudden you get recognized and people see you as a problem solver and as someone who's trying to move things forward and it makes you look proactive. So I recommend that you adopt those three, um, um, what do you want to call them, three actions or action items in order to make you a meeting superstar as well and help you to be on the road to the earnings that you would like to acquire in the corporate arena. But for now, that's all I have and I'm going to get back to my massive document while I eat my lunch. But I hope that helps someone out there. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know because I would love to hear them. But in the meantime, you guys have a great one. Talk to you soon. Bye.